Hey guys, this is Sophia. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to touch up your own minis. For a quick disclaimer, this is not mine. This was lent to me by a local game shop owner and he was kind enough to let me use this model on my channel. I want to show you guys that as you get better at painting, you can always go back and revive old projects that maybe you weren't completely satisfied with. I must say this was quite challenging for me because I know this is not mine and I don't want to ruin someone's precious model. I hope you guys enjoy this video of me struggling with this restoration project. Now grab your brush and let's explore! Meet Titan Gladiator. He's a scorn model from Horde's Tabletop Wargame. This is where he is right now, so let's see what we can do with him. Start off by putting skin tone over his body. I'm aiming for a French grayish elfin skin tone. I'm going to use gray sear and a bed in black. You can do it carelessly, but make sure that paint goes into every crease. Use a big brush to quickly paint over all of his body. Remember, a big brush can be very versatile. You can use the tip of the brush when you're painting detailed areas, but you can also use the side of the brush to cover a large area with a single brush stroke. As I'm painting, all the parts of his body are becoming one color. Now that reveals the actual shape and details of his body. So as I'm painting, I'm planning what to do, how to paint it, and paying close attention to those details. Moving on to his armor. I'm going to be using Liberator Gold. I found that Liberator Gold doesn't need as much as thinning as, say, Lead Belcher. As I'm painting his armor, I'm trying to understand the details of the armor. That way I know how to bring them out with the new layers of paint. I'm using a small brush because I want to save the previous paint job that was already there. There's a really thin gold rim, so I'm basically using highlighting technique here by using the side of the brush and gliding through the line. Now on to the red portion of his armor. I'm going to be using Mephiston Red and a small detail brush. I'm going to add a little bit of a bad and black to make the shading effect. If I can get it right, it's going to look really good on the shoulder. The mixture of Mephiston Red and a bad and black is something that I'm going to use a lot on this model. We already went over with just red, so by adding this mixture in the right place, we can make the armor look more realistic. I'm doing the same thing on the other side. If you want to kinda inject some colors on the corners without ruining the other color, try to do a circular motion. It might work well for you. Well, not just a circular motion, other than just straight line motion. There are numerous other movements you can do with the brush to achieve a certain look. As you can see, as I'm introducing a little bit of darkness, the shoulder armor is starting to look 3D.
I know a lot of people are into non-metallic metal now, aka NMM, and this is basically how it works. Of course, you need to intensify the darkness and the highlights. I'm not adding it over the whole area, but just where I want the color to be darker. I'm adding more Mephiston Red onto the center of the armor to make it pop even more. Where the two plates meet, I want it to be very dark and that's why I'm adding a lot of black to this mixture because that's where the shadows intensify. Like I mentioned before, I want to save the previous coat of paint as much as I can so I'm trying to not go over the whole area. For this project, I'm going to finish one half of him first and then do the other. I mean, obviously, I would never just paint one half of model at a time. I thought this would be a cool way for you guys to easily see and compare the original paint job with what we were able to do with the touch-ups. If you guys like this idea, please let me know in the comments section and if you have any models like this that need new life, I'd love to see some before and afters. Anyway, I'm really digging this red with gold dry brushing. Now I'm going to use Wild Rider Red with a hint of Mephiston Red. Since the previous color is a base of red and a dry brushing of gold, I need something orange to go over the part that was not completely covered. You can't see it yet, but I'm adding darker colors here so later on when I paint the rim gold, it'll really stand out. As you can see, I'm trying to figure out where the original mold details are. It's easier to see by turning the model under really good lighting. Having so much paint already on the model obscures the original details, so we have to work hard to bring them back out. I'm trying to go over all the areas thoroughly. Now I'm adding Liberator Gold around the rim.
don't know why, but I really like Liberator Gold. And I'm going to use this color a lot on my channel. It's my go-to. Raikland Flesh Shade will give a nice hint of brown without darkening the gold. It'll also bring out all the nice details. I'm just lightly going over only on the gold area. This technique will be applied to all the rest of his armor in the same way. Moving on to his tusks. I'm going to be using a mixture of Ushapti Bone and Palette Witch Flesh. Make sure to thin those paints down well because any paint with a lot of white in it will get clumpy easily, so we want multiple thin coats. People have asked me a lot about painting really clean white power armor and the trick with that is patience. Multiple thin coats and letting each coat dry before applying the next. The same is true for any color that has a lot of white in it. I will let this coat dry completely and move on to the rope around this arm. For that, I'm using Screaming Skull. It'll still be opaque after one coat of Screaming Skull, but don't worry because after some highlights and a wash, the color's gonna be really vibrant. I guess I never painted a rope before, and this was so much fun. I must say I really enjoy this part. Next, it's time for a mani-pedi. Get them nails done, girl. Okay, moving on to highlighting of those ropes. Palette Witch Flash is perfect for it. After that, add some nice wash of some seraphim sepia and non oil. Put some extra wash into all the creases. I'm going to do a nice wash of Serapin Sepia to his whole skin using a big brush. Oh no, don't, don't you, oh, no. Whew, that was close. Oh, thank God. Uh, where was I? Oh, it brings out all the muscle structure and adds a warm tone overall to his body. I don't normally use a lot of wash, but I must say I really enjoyed using them on this model since he's kind of grim dark-ish.
After a wash of serapin sepia is completely dried, I'm going to add another wash of known oil so the creases of his muscle can stand out even more. Make sure to go over all the creases by gently pushing the brush down. Oh man, there are so many details on his arms. I'm gently putting down a little bit of wash on his face. It brings out the details of his skin and gives a nice texture to it. So he has some body piercing on his back, and I'm going to use Screaming Skull for that. So here's where some improvisation comes into how I paint. I'm going to take four different paints that are all similar colors in the range of bluish gray. Celestial gray, abandoned black, Fenrisian, and rust grays. The cool tone of these paints will be balanced out because I already put down a wash of warm tone. Where it needs a light tone, for example on the race portion, I'll use Celestial Gray and Fenrisian Gray to make it stand out. You can use the tip of the brush to give more texture to the skin. You know, I can just put base colors, a wash, and highlights, but in that case, you cannot build up a medium tone. Medium tone is what gives the whole taste of an object. You know, literally, the brightness is where the light hits, and the darkness is where the light cannot reach. The medium tone, however, is where the object reveals the actual color, and if you do it right, you can feel the mass and the volume of the object. You cannot build a medium tone in one brush stroke. It needs multiple layers to achieve that. That's why we say you are building the medium tone. I normally do not like visible brush strokes, but it seems to work well in his tough textured skin. Make a darker tone by using rust gray and a band black to add more depth to the muscle. And I'm doing this by putting it in the creases. While you're building the medium tone, you can totally improvise and explore. By doing this, you're already getting better at painting. My suggestion when it comes to painting, man, really, there's no rule. Try to expand your knowledge by trying different things. You will learn a lot more than just watching how-to videos. Really, trust me. I'm adding Xeris Purple to the light tone mixture to add the purpley look that you can get from elephant skin.
Okay, move on to the eyes. You don't need to worry when you paint the main parts of the eyes. You can always fix that by painting the eyelids. I'm using a band in black to paint his pupils. Now I'm adding the dots of white paint to his eyes and that's where the light hits. Do not mess up. Well that's done. Now moving on to his tongue. I'm going to be using pink horror and the full grim pink from Citadel. Palette which flesh will be used for his teeth. Give a nice shading to his tongue using Galupus Pink. Since this guy needs some serious dental work, another layer of Palette Witch Flash is needed. Now move on to his base. Okay, my biggest pet peeve is whenever I see a beautifully painted model but it has a dirty base rim. It just bugs me. So what I'm gonna do here is to color the rim of the base very evenly and I'm going to mask it until I'm completely done with the whole paint job. There's a masking liquid that'll protect certain area until you're ready to peel it. We call it drawing gum. I'll show you later. Anyway, the first layer of black should be very thin and even. You need to use a big brush to go over the rim as fast as you can. I don't know if you guys can see it from the video, but I'm trying not to push down the brush too much because if you do, it'll actually absorb what was already there and leave brush strokes. After it's completely dried, add another layer and try not to leave the brush strokes. Until the second layer of black dries, I'm going to highlight the rope around this arm. This is drawing gum. This guy is super useful. Let's just say there's a part that you really don't want to mess up. Well, use drawing gum to protect it. It's a liquid type masking tape that'll stay on until you peel it. After the second layer on the rim is completely dry, add a layer of drawing gum. This angel will save future attacks of paint. Oh, and make sure to use old brush because it'll get into the strands of the brush and might ruin your nice brushes.
I think I shook the bottle too much. That's why it's so bubbly. After a layer of drawing gum is completely dried, I'm going to use Sterling Mud from Citadel to add texture and color to the base. Try to scoop up the grid of the paint and distribute it evenly. I really love using this paint. It's so much fun. If you want more texture in the base, there's a really easy technique with baking soda and kitty litter. I'll probably show that in a future video. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. Now I'm going to dry brush the base using Screaming Skull. Make sure that the layer of sterling mud is completely dried. Okay, who doesn't love dry brushing? By dry brushing, the texture of sterling mud comes alive. It gives a nice and realistic look. I know the whole paint job is not done yet, but I'm peeling the drawing gum to demonstrate how it's peeled. And yeah, all you have to do is rub it hard. As you can see, sterling mud and dry brushing didn't get on the rim. Now I'm going to add abandoned black to his tusks to give the texture and color of ivory. I'm intentionally leaving brush strokes to achieve the look of the ivory. I'm using Screaming Skull to go over the part that is too dark. By adding another layer of Screaming Skull naturally makes medium tone. On a side note, I've been using iMovie until this video, and I switched to Velo app. This is not an advertisement, but I'm genuinely impressed with this app, so I'm just introducing it to you guys. There's a free version, but if you guys want to unlock all the features, it's only about 10 US dollars. It's really easy to use, and there are a lot of things that can make your video interesting. Just keep working at it until you get the result you want. I'm adding a baden black to depict the scratches on its tusks.
Okay, I'm happy with that. So, we're literally halfway done. This is after going over the rest of his right side the same way. I wanted to show you guys half and half so you can really see the original compared to what we were able to do. Uh, I must say I'm happy with his face. And several days later... Ugh, this guy is finally done. Oh my god, what a journey. I hope this video shows you guys that you can improve on a previous paint job. Just because you weren't happy with something you did before doesn't mean you have to strip the whole model and start over. You can use what you already did as a starting point to make something new. Well, due to the lockdown, I couldn't give this guy back to the owner yet, but I hope he's watching this video and I hope he likes it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment as well. I'll see you guys in two weeks.